This is Joseph Wu. He is the Minister of Foreign Affairs for a country I love, Taiwan. Now he's conducting the interview here. Uh, the, the branding says Al Jazeera, but I believe that Reuters could be doing the interview. I'm not sure how all that works. But the person conducting the interview here asked him a question. Now I'm going to let Joseph Wu respond to this question. And then I'm going to provide my analysis as someone who's lived in Taiwan 10 years. But the interviewer, with his glorious British accent, part of your job is to sell Taiwan, to promote Taiwan. How do you describe Taiwan? How do you promote Taiwan? When you're, when you're, when you're going around the world and you visit various international organizations, what's the, what's the key point that you, you, you stress? And Joseph Wu responded, well... The first key point, of course, is... Of course, Taiwan is a democracy. Taiwan is a mature democracy. Right there, I'm going to stop you. I, I, he says Taiwan is a mature democracy. Do I need to play this again? I think I need to play this again. Let's just revisit uh, where he was just a moment ago. Okay, so he answers the question. First point, of course, Taiwan is a democracy. Taiwan is a mature democracy. Okay, I'm going to come back to that. Taiwan is not a mature democracy, but Taiwan is a maturing democracy. Taiwan is probably more mature than most maturing democracies. I'm going to come back to that. Remember that. But here are the rest of the very good things he has to say. And Taiwan can be seen as a model of democracy in this part of the world. And the second aspect is uh, Taiwan's uh, status in uh, economic development. You know, Taiwan is already being seen as a model of economic development as well. Uh, even though the uh, growing rate, growth rate in the last few years might not be great, but Taiwan is undergoing transformation yep, from they are. the old uh, uh, manufacturing-based uh, economy now to innovation-based economy. Now, wait a minute. What's wrong with manufacturing? We, we need manufacturing. But OK, he's got a point. There is progress. If you can do innovation, then I, uh, that, that, is, that is growth. OK. If you look at the, the uh, uh, trade relations uh, in between Taiwan and Europe, which is very far away, you know, the figure is growing. And if you look at the investment of Taiwan companies in the very far away countries in Europe or in India or in Japan or in the United States or in Mexico, the number is also growing. Taiwan is investing in other countries. Okay, all right. Mature democracy. The term mature is one of the favorite words for a maturing adolescent. 12, 13, 14 years old, they love to say to people their own age or younger, act mature, be mature, I'm mature now. No one says I'm mature as much as a 12 to 14 year old. And he just said that he's mature. Does America ever say we're a mature democracy? Do adults ever say I'm mature? Do they ever say that? Do you, my YouTube channel, this here, I'm talking to you probably as an American, probably. Okay, so let's, let's go with that. If you're an American and you think of America, do you think, oh, the best word to describe me is mature? Is that what you think of? No, but that's the word that Joseph Wu thought of to describe Taiwan. Okay, so I, I want to make this point here. He's not lying. Joseph Wu is a good man. We need people like him. He's good in his work. Taiwan needs him. This is good for the world. He's, he's, not, he's not lying. He is good. He's not in error. He's not wrong. He just doesn't understand how much farther there is for Taiwan to go because he's never seen it. He's unaware of how immature he still is is in his country. He just doesn't know. Now, why is this a problem? On May 22nd, I am going to be telling the horror story of my own experience in Taiwan. The sad part about my horror story, probably the most horrifying part, is that in Taiwan it's normal. Now, Taiwan is by no means the worst human rights violator in the world. Nowhere even close. But... Two days ago, 
I spent all day going to Taipei to talk to the government about my own situation, just convinced that somebody somewhere was going to be capable of listening. Maybe I thought because I'm American and they need our military defense, they want to do something nice to us. They'll at least listen to reason and they won't say the types of things that if someone in government says it can result in a billion dollar lawsuit. Uh uh. Taiwan couldn't figure it out. And I, for the first time, I'm, I'm totally ashamed to say this 10 years in Taiwan, I've seen injustice. I've seen normal. I have friends for the first time. They treated me like a normal Taiwanese citizen, not like an American. And I actually saw for the first time I saw it. I never was really able to see it before. I saw how the normal government workers, the, 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 the bureaucracy, we'd call it the people who work in government 10, 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 years, how those people really don't care at all about doing a good job, about not giving injustice to people, about making sure that they have the paperwork all handed in correctly so that someone doesn't accidentally get evicted from a house or, you know, it's some type of injustice. They just don't care in America. They know they're supposed to at least pretend to care, but they didn't even try to pretend. I was amazed. Okay. All right. I don't want to whine and complain about this, but I saw it for the first time. And I, I've been discussing this with my Taiwanese friends. They say, Jesse, that is so, so normal. And I'm like, I'm not telling the Taiwanese about this because they already know I'm telling my closest friends. I understand you now and I've seen this and I understand it. Okay. All right. So enough whining and complaining about my situation, Taiwan situation, the people I've seen it myself, but it's so normal for so many Taiwanese Taiwan's government just doesn't care. Now here's the problem. I have the documentation in my own situation. I had an application for something. They processed it absolutely wrong. I can't sue Taiwan's government because if a judge did agree with me, he would not require any changes to be made at all. He would just say, yes, you're right. And that would be the end of it. That's how their judicial system works. Their bureaucracy doesn't take care to read things properly and to follow instructions. They don't follow their own procedure. One lady on the phone tried to tell me she couldn't talk to me. I asked her what the number was to refer to the rule that she was following. She had no idea what I was talking about because they don't follow rules in their government. Now, here's the problem with this. This is the problem. If we're going to have a military alliance with Taiwan and we have certain pieces of military equipment, certain tools that function a certain way, if there's a certain way things are supposed to operate, if we're going to cooperate with their military, there's certain rules for how we cooperate. If the people in the offices can't follow basic rules, we can't rely on them militarily as an ally. Now we could supply them. We could do our best to teach them. We could let them stand on their own. That's good. That's very good. But there's a limit to how much you can rely on the trustworthiness and maturity of a 14 year old. We love Taiwan. We need to protect Taiwan. Taiwan is a flourishing, thriving, young, growing, 14 year old type adolescent democracy that needs our protection. But no, Joseph Wu doesn't. He's so adorable because he's so excited about his economy and he's right. Taiwan's growing by leaps and bounds, but there is a massive underbelly in Taiwan, massive, 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 where their own government just doesn't care. Joseph Wu, I want you to help the world understand why Taiwan is a great and wonderful friend. But Joseph Wu, I have to tell you as your friend, the best thing you can do to help the world love you is to focus on cleaning up the mess inside your own country, because it really is that big. And more importantly, Taiwan can improve that much more. There is that much more room for Taiwan to improve. So, we in the U S as we develop our strategy, our friendship with Taiwan, it's very important that we remember part of friendship means that we help friends grow up. We cannot just 
applaud and cheer and support Taiwan. We can't just give them military equipment. We can't just say, oh yeah, yeah, we're friends. We have to get involved and help them grow up. Example, you're in your house. Mom and dad are in your house. Let's say you're the mom and dad. The house next door, your friends, your neighbors, your, your properties border on each other. Your kids walk into each other's yards all the time to play together. That's great. Well, the family next door, they don't throw their sprinkler on your lawn. They don't drive on your lawn. They don't mow the lawn and throw rocks in your windows. They're pretty good neighbors, but, <clears throat> but several times your kids go over to their house and their kids beat up your kids. That, that happens sometimes. Great friends, great family. You like them. They're not mean people, but just sometimes this happens. There's a point at which you as the parents need to go across the yard and go to the other house and go to the other parents and say, I see you're having trouble because your kids are bullying mine. I want to talk with your kids, with you there and see if I can help. A good friend would say, thank you. Yes, please come and do that. Because a good friend would want to have that type of help. It's not to say you parents are bad. We hate you. And you're not going to go yell at the kids. Sometimes kids don't want to listen to their parents, but they'll listen to someone else's. Taiwan's bureaucracy is not going to go away overnight. Taiwan's current president is having massive political problems, as Joseph Wu says in this interview. And I hope that you listen to this interview. This is an amazing, amazing interview. Taiwan's president is having political problems because the swamp, the massive, uncaring, unjust, lazy, lax bureaucracy doesn't do a good job. And one president can't get rid of 40 years of bad employees in just four years. It, it can't work that way. It's kind of not supposed to. But if America were to make it loud and clear, for Taiwan, for example, we should do this with all countries. In fact, all countries should do this with each other. If America were to make it loud and clear, we're going to be cutting down on our trade with you. And, you know, we're going to be watching because we're going to see that you guys and your bureaucracy are doing a better job. If America makes that loud and clear in the newspapers, then Taiwan's own government and Taiwan's people can say, no, the government employees need to do better fire more people for being lazy, encourage other people to step up their game and be better. Sometimes pressure from the parents next door makes kids obey a little bit better. And that's what the children in Taiwan's old bureaucracy need to have from us in America. It's, it's, it's great that we want to be friends with Taiwan. I hope you watch the rest of this interview. I mean, Joseph was about 25 minutes long. It's, it's a little over, longer than that. Well, I'm sorry. There's this almost one minute of this graphic nonsense at the beginning. People still do that sometimes, but the, the, the 25 minutes of substance in this interview really are great. I hope you watch the whole thing. I want Taiwan to participate in the world, but Taiwan needs to stop trying so much to participate in the rest of the world and the need to ask the world for help dealing with their bureaucracy at home. The, the people in Taiwan are pretty much given up. They, they really believe there's no way to clean up their own bureaucracy. I think there are some steps they can take but it really is old and bad. And even the leaders in Taiwan's government, maybe good politicians, a lot of them not, like, like our worst politicians are far better than most of their top politicians. They just, like you try to talk to a legislator, they're offended like, like a Chinese god would be if a cockroach tried to get his attention. I mean, that's really how they view people. They do not listen to constituents. You try to talk to an elected politician, they don't listen to you. Taiwan's president and uh, a, a few others are glorious, beautiful exceptions, but their government doesn't listen and they need to get that dealt with before they have all these loud efforts to try to step into other world leadership roles and participate too much elsewhere. If they clean that stuff up at home, if Taiwan cleans that stuff up at home, they won't have a problem participating elsewhere. As Americans, I think we should tell them, yeah, that's right. We're here to help. We're here to help. But we're here not just to help tell you that you've arrived and lie to you. We're here to help you with the things that you do have going on in your family where you have issues with. That's, that's what we can do with Taiwan as friends.